ABA was started in the 1970s by Ole Ivar Lovas, a Norwegian-American psychologist. However, his research was started in 1962 when he established the Young Autism Project Clinic at the University of California. Here, he implemented a procedure he described as discrete trial training, which was used to teach autistic children things like eye contact, motor skills, expressive language, and a whole host of other things. During this procedure, a therapist would give the child a prompt and would give reinforcement depending on the child's response. A positive response if the child followed the prompt correctly and a negative one if they didn't. The negative responses were things like electric shocks, slaps, verbal reprimands, and withholding food and affection. The child would also get a negative reprimand if they stimmed, avoided eye contact, or climbed on furniture. It wasn't just during sessions that autistics would have to deal with this. Lovas also taught parents, usually mothers, how to continue treatment even at home. 25 years later, in 1987, Lovas published a study saying that after 40 hours a week of this treatment, nine of the 19 autistic children could communicate in a typical fashion, had increased their IQs by 30 points, and could participate in regular classrooms. However, it's impossible to test if this actually worked, because to do so would mean to recreate it, and it can't be for ethical reasons. That tells you just how bad this project was if it can't be re recreated because it's an ethics violation. I'm not too shocked that Lavas would do such horrid things to autistics, though. He didn't exactly have the highest opinion of us. How about I quote him so you can get a, an idea of how he felt about us? <clears throat> quote goes, you see, you start pretty much from scratch when you work with an autistic child. You have a person in the physical sense. They have hair, a noise, uh, a noise, a nose, and a mouth, but they are not people in the psychological sense. One way to look at the job of helping autistic kids is to see it as a matter of constructing a person. You have the raw materials but you have to build the person. He didn't see autistics as people. He saw them as less than human. And when you dehumanize someone, it's a lot easier to do horrible things to them. It was obvious that Lavas had no interest in finding out why autistic children would behave the way they did. He didn't care about what the root cause of stimming was or why autistics didn't like maintaining eye contact. All he cared about was forcing them to act like a neurotypical child. And if that was at the expense of the child's comfort and safety, so be it. They weren't people to him, so why should he treat them as such? It's sickening. What's worse is that Lavas saw himself and his research as moral. He saw himself as the good guy. A key part of his methods was hopelessness. He would constantly push the hopelessness of autism and the future of the autistic child. This pessimism was what was used to justify the intensity cost, and violence in the treatment. Often his patients, more like victims, had had prior treatment before being sent to Lovas. 
he used the fact that the previous treatments didn't work as proof of how good his work was and how autistic children needed to be treated with his methods for there to be any improvements. However, a study in 1998 stated that such early intensive behavioral, behavioral intervention, also known as EIBI, or early intervention, should be regarded with skepticism. The study doubted Lovas's methods, but sadly, the next year, in 1999, the, US, the United States Surgeon General endorsed Lovas's study and stated that it shown how effective applied behavioral methods were at reducing, quote-unquote, inappropriate behavior and increased communication, learning, and appropriate social behavior. I'm surprised that anyone would see this as a success when Lavasse's own study stated that only 9 out of 19 autistic children apparently benefited from it. That's 47%. That's not even a passing grade. There is no mention of how the other 53% of the children reacted to the treatment. Did they change? Did they stay the same? Are they PTSD-ridden messes now? Who knows? Now, we can't talk about the history of ABA without bringing up Lavasse's involvement in conversion therapy. Dubbed the Feminine Boy Project, Lovas and George Reckers, a bizarrely appropriate name, used similar methods as ABA to increase masculine behaviors in boys, such as playing with boys, roughhousing, and choosing toys made for boys, and to decrease feminine behaviors, such as playing with girls, playing with dolls, and having, I kid you not, swishy wrists. You know, that stereotypical gay limp wrist thing? Yeah, that. Parents were trained to praise their sons for behaving in a masculine manner and to ignore or even hit the boy if they acted more femininely. Much like with using hopelessness to justify his treatment of autistics, he used it to justify the feminine boy project. The rationale they used was predictions of, and I'm paraphrasing records here, serious disabling consequences for adults that may range from interference with a normal heterosexual relationship to a continuing sense of shame and fear of disclosure, which can be extremely dis disabling. And this wasn't just about sexuality either. This was about gender too. They stated that if not treated, a more harmful consequence could come about in the form of altering their bodies through surgery or hormone treatment. The Feminine Boy Project wasn't just gay conversion therapy. It was trans conversion therapy. Wreckers said that preventative intervention in early childhood was needed to avoid cross-gender behaviors and that without treatment, these children may easily be exploited by medical professionals in their adult life. Apparently, they thought that doctors were just on the prowl for easy prey to give gender reassignment surgery to. Lavas stated in 1987, in the 1987 study, sorry, Lavas stated in a 1987 study, sorry, that those who went through the Feminine Boy Project were indistinguishable from their normal friends. Normal! And do you want to know what disturbs me most about this study? It's the same thing that disturbs me about Lavas's other 1987 study, the one that, of the benefits of ABA. I was alive 
when these studies were released. Yeah, I was only a year old, but it shows how recent these things were. These aren't relics of the past. 